Hey guys, so welcome back. Let's get into this tutorial. So I'll show you his Instagram and the images we'll be working with. And here's his Instagram. I find like he's got quite a variety of shots for his feed. He's often shooting midday, which I quite like. It's a bit different. As for tones and that, pretty much the natural tones. There's some blues in the shadows that come through. There's a lot of greens. I'll try to show you the one we'll be working with. Come right down as a while ago. Uh, this one, we're gonna be working with this one and one more of his other shots if you guys join the course i'm gonna ask him if i can use his raw images to give to you guys I haven't asked him yet but hopefully he's down to do that there's going to be heaps of raw images from past tutorials and future tutorials if you join the course you can follow along in these tutorials yeah so blues otherwise natural tones not too many shadows there's a lot of detail in the shadows and yeah, I'll be linking up all the stuff down in the description, guys. So go down there, give him a follow. Let him know you found him through these tutorials. I hope to do another one on more of his recent stuff. Because these photos were from a while ago. But natural tones, bit of sharpening going in there. Let's get into it. Alright, so let's get into this edit. First thing I'll do, let's enable profile corrections. Let's come back up. So we just obviously look quite underexposed because we've um, exposed for the highlights in camera. So first things first, we'll bring this up and let's just quickly talk about the settings and why you might have chosen them as well. So F4, we obviously want the subject in focus and then the background in focus, but not tack sharp. There's a bit of a, a shallow depth of field going on, not majorly. 65 millimeters so that's gonna kind of compress the background a little bit i probably would have originally thought it was a wide lens but it's actually compressing everything quite nicely iso 200 because it's nice and bright and then a quick shutter speed because it's nice and bright as well just exposing the image okay so I'm going to turn on these curves and I've already done them. Now they're obviously way too contrasty now. So let's just quickly remove that contrast. I can't bring the contrast any further down. So we'll go with about there. So we can also reduce contrast by brightening the darks and lowering the highlights and whites. Now I can show you what the curves are doing. Now in the color channels, these curves are exactly the same i did change the green one a little bit because you can see how we've got that purple up in the sky so otherwise it's the only thing i changed was just pulling out a bit of green and it adds in purple so it's all i did in the highlights otherwise the color channels are just adding in contrast and then we're going to use this one for our fade to the image and we pretty much just have a fade to the shadows but as you can see in this image we've got hardly any blacks or shadows so doing something like this you can't see much of a change but if you look at his other images there definitely is a fade yeah we could get away with it down here but i've chosen that because i think in other images he does have a strong fade now we get a bit of contrast in the mid-tones which is really important as well so this was just a preset i applied and it's just a balanced curve in each of the channels and just to add in contrast give me a good starting point and then this one is just to add in a bit of contrast as well so if i flatten reset channel and you can see the color if i just turn it off now that's what the color channels are doing just a bit of contrast and then if we so we've got mid-tone contrast with this curve because I've like pulled down the shadows a bit, brought up the brighter mid-tones and then yeah that fade and then a bit of a pop to the brighter areas. Okay so up here my reasons for doing this. So looking at his image I almost thought there was a fade in the curves. I almost thought he had done something like this because it looks quite smooth and not too contrasty or not too bright in the highlights and whites. So I almost thought he had done something like this. But then if we look at say his histogram, so clicking on his image, this is his image. You can see we're almost right at the edge of the histogram there for the white. So if we go back to our one, we definitely don't want to do something like this because we want to be right next to the edge for the highlights and if i did anything like this it would really bring down the highlights and that's not what he has so we need to get the flatness that i see by dropping the highlights and the whites up here and this will also adjust our histogram but not as harshly as uh, the curves so if we just fine tune some of these um bit more 
contrast. Now we're going to have to do some brushes and filters as well. Okay. Um, dehaze maybe, maybe a tiny bit. We'll just put in a little bit there. It is quite hazy, a nice amount of haze in the image, so we might not need that. Sharpening will bring up. Yeah, so let's work on some colors now. We'll do split toning first. So we look a little purple in the shadows, like that's where all our blues are. So we got too many blues down there. Well, they're too purple. So we can add in a bit of a lighter blue and that might soften up those purples, bring them a bit towards lighter blue. All right, coming up. We can also do that up here. I think it's a combination of both maybe. So now it's much lighter, not so purple. Okay, so dealing with saturation, let's bring down, say, reds, oranges, yellows. these greens up a lot we want these greens to pop out and then to add a punch to some of these colors I think yellows oranges and then let's deepen the greens so we obviously need to change the hue for some of these so like want more oranges for the yellows greens we want them to be still showing so it's moving towards a blue okay and purples so we don't want too many of these purples, especially over here. So we'll just bring them towards the blue. I think they look quite blue over there. Just go about. And then saturation. I always just drop these to quite a bit. Okay, and I think I forgot to show you guys the cropping. So if we just go cropping, as you can see, we just sent it up a little bit. Rule of thirds, kind of, with the horizon on rule of thirds. And then this is probably the foreground on a rule of thirds almost, but putting her right in the middle as well. And then let's just go back to where we were. One thing I noticed is the aspect ratio, I think, has been moved. So if we just move this to the right, you can see how it goes a bit more like this. So if we click on his image, this is his image. Our image looks a lot more similar now. So I think he's done that for maybe like trying to make the mountains look taller or something. And then as for grain, let's chuck some in. Let's go with 23. Actually you might just bring that down to about 20. Okay, so we obviously need to do some brushes and stuff now. Like our foreground looks pretty good, but in the middle of our image, we don't look very good. So go filters, I've already placed them. What we want to do, so if I press O, get rid of that. Let's brighten up the middle. And then bring up the black so you can see like everything's getting quite bright and the bars of this is looking quite dark still. So I'm gonna also bring up blacks. It's going to really soften up that contrast a lot. You can see how that kind of keeps the haze as well. Okay. And then over here, I just think there's an enhanced amount of shine coming through. So we will just bring up the exposure a bit. Now we need some brushes now. So down in the valley is obviously, he's tried to bring that out a bit. So I've got a brush here and I've actually already done it. So here's all of the changes. So contrast, if I just... So press O, that's where it's affecting. I also brushed the foreground a little bit to give that a bit of a shine. But if I just remove, hopefully you guys can see what it's doing. So that's without it, and that's with it. So just a bit of contrast, bit of brightness, bringing out everything down in the valley there. So if I just delete that again, and then bring it back. Hope you can see what contrast, clarity, just to give it a bit of a pop and adds in a little bit of contrast as well. Saturation just to bring them all out a bit as well. And yeah, a little bit of exposure. We want one on our subject here. So this one, we want to bring up the exposure, contrast to our subject, make them pop. And then I'm gonna bring down the blacks to keep that contrast because sometimes bringing up the exposure, even bringing up the contrast as well, your blacks kind of get washed out. I want to keep those blacks dark and it adds to the contrast. Yeah, and then saturation to help pop as well. Let's put quite a bit in. And then possibly sharpness if you want to, to the subject. 
and I think we're looking pretty good. Like there's a bit of haze on top of this corner here of the thing. So who knows? I think he might have done like some extra haze over here. Inverted this. But we won't mess around too much with that. I think we've done the main main bit of it. We don't there's obviously brushing going on and it'll take for ages to figure it all out. But that looks pretty good. Now he's got another image, so if I copy settings pretty much get everything well before I just do that let's show you reset this whole edit before after looks really good okay so here's another one of his images over here edited here raw let's paste the settings we just had bang okay so we just like need to darken it a bit let's reset those blacks get darker blacks as for warmth we look really blue so let's bring this up and then we look quite green. So let's go towards the purples and we get much closer to where we want. In highlights, uh, we, we look pretty good. Bring them down a touch, whites. So our colors don't look great. So let's make our blues no, they look all right there. We might have to do some split toning. Let's get our orange. So the sky is going to be, and the grass is a big telling point for the colors here. Make these greens a touch warmer. Saturation. Let's bring these yellows back. And before we do any more with color, we'll just come down to split toning. Now you can see, like down here, is the, there's a lot of blue down there. So. Let's pick a nice blue. I think we need to go a touch more on the deeper blue side. So shifting this to the right, chuck it in. Now that has made our blue blues that were already in the image really saturated. So come up to saturation, get rid of them. We still keep the blues we just put in the split toning, but we dampen all the blues up here. And then as for luminance, let's just reset some of these. Then we're looking pretty good. Um, if we just come back up to saturation again. And then we need some like brushes and stuff again. So the, these images aren't actually exactly the same. These rocks here are actually these rocks over here. So it's like a step to the right and forward. So they might be throwing off you guys eye a little bit but here is a filter down the bottom and let's just darken and that helps guide our eye upward to the subject and then if we get a brush I've already placed them all so if press O for you guys that's where it's affecting just enhancing that light there hitting the edge okay that brings that out a lot more okay so if we come over here maybe our greens are too saturated Maybe they could be a bit warmer. Okay, so I just want to do this one really quick. There's maybe like some more shadows and black. So maybe it's pretty good not adjusting the curve at all, but you can see how like we're darker down here. We still have that harsh fade. That's why I wanted to bring this up quite a bit, but maybe we want to do something like this and we get slightly darker blacks. You can see how we're getting a bit closer to what he has down here. But maybe we want this side of the mountain a bit darker. It's dark in the blacks. I don't want to spend too long on this because this is our second edit. But you can see just a few adjustments and we get really uh, close to this other edit as well. So uh, I'll just leave it there, guys. Here's our, for this one, our before and after. Okay, so that wraps up that tutorial, guys. So comment down below who you guys want to see during the course. If you're interested in raw images, learning step-by-step, step, the information you need. We're going to get over 100 guest editors into the course as well. So that's a crazy amount of value. You get the raw image for each one of them. You get the preset for each one of them. You can follow beginning to end and you don't miss a single step. And yeah, there's no course more in depth with as much value as this one at the moment. And I'm constantly adding to it. So if you guys want a free lesson on color, how to understand color, they'll be down in the description. Uh, yeah, really important lesson. Make sure you've watched that one. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. Catch you in the next one.